to some investors, index funds are a pretty staid and simple topic. If you want exposure to small cap stocks, for example, just pick a fund that tracks a small cap index, right? Well, as our guest today, Catherine Yashimoto will probably tell you it's not that simple. Catherine is Director of Equity Index Products at one of the world's largest index providers, FTSE Russell. Thanks for joining us today, Catherine. Thank you for having me, Murray. There are thousands of different index mutual funds and passively managed exchange traded funds being sold in the U.S. markets alone. And over the course of any given set of years, hundreds of new ones are either being planned or launched. Some are pitching themselves as smart beta, others are going by the moniker of systematic or quantitative. There are also managers who are labeling themselves as enhanced indexers or purveyors of the ESG, environmental, so social, and governance investment strategies. So Catherine, how can investors take a more discerning look at this immense and fast evolving marketplace? Certainly, I agree with your comment that there's now a plethora of indexing strategies. The indexing universe has evolved um, so much. So considering in the origins of an indexing, index funds, you know, you had some market cap weighted indexes. And in a little over a decade ago, well, maybe a couple of decades ago now, um, it, you know, alternatively weighted indexing started kind of coming to the forefront and, you know, becoming more mainstream. So uh, now we have, you know, equal weighted strategies or, uh, you know, factor based strategies, ESG or, you know, climate oriented strategies. So the, there's a plethora of index uh, strategies out there. Uh, and how do clients, uh, how do our clients, you know, discern, you know, what they want? Um, they look for targeted outcomes, perhaps. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, the indexes are delivering sets of exposures, really, to add to the toolkit to an investor. So if they want to, you know, just going back to the origin of indexing and index funds, if they want exposure to small cap or large cap or growth value, but now today you have additional flavors, like do you want a... Uh, a quality factor or uh, climate oriented. So I, I think it really uh, boils down to looking at the index ground rules and see what you know the uh, what are the components of that methodology that the indexes are based on, and, and that should help direct and guide investors into selecting the right benchmark for them. At IFA, we defined index funds broadly as mutual or exchange traded funds that follow a set of rules of ownership which under normal circumstances are held constant. Um, the SEC, interestingly, has two definitions, one they describe as a traditional index fund and another as a non-traditional or enhanced index fund. Uh, how does Russell generally define an index fund? Index fund, you know, you're spot on that it, it is held constant. The securities are held constant and following the set of rules, right? So intra rebalance, um, let's say in, in, in an index, it, it's rebalanced annually, right? The Russell reconstitution, we're approaching it right now. Uh, the Russell indexes are fully rebalanced in June. Um, outside of that, there might be, there will be quarterly share changes and IPO additions, for example. But the indexes still have to follow the rules. So, you know, uh, you know, their corporate actions applied, of course. If there's a company delisting, you know, that's obviously reflected in the index. But just because the market takes a downturn doesn't mean that the index then changes course. Uh, unless there might be some specific, um, you know, rules-based strategies out there today that might uh, define, you know, a certain levels where it might switch to another index, for example, to a cash index. There are some volatility control indexes out there that do um, this type of behavior. So, so it depends on the rules. And then, you know, it still follows the rules and it, it is basically held constant. The securities are held constant, meaning there's no investment um, view applied into a rebalance. And, and during the rebalances, the index membership, the constituents in the index are reset, again, following the methodology. How an index fund captures an asset class and weights its constituents when it's rules-based, that provides investors with a sense of consistency and um, 
knowledge about exactly what they're investing in any given time, correct? That's correct. And and so that's why I mentioned the importance of the ground rules. Transparency is of utmost importance to indexes and the downstream effect on the index funds, right? So the index funds need to track an index with published methodology, ground rules that, you know, clearly state what the objective of that index is. It might sound counterintuitive to some investors, but isn't it easier to define what active management is than what an index fund is today? Yeah, I, I think you're you're spot on there too. I mean, it, it, uh, when I describe what I do to my friends and family, uh, they, they're like, index, what's that? <laughs> so, but then, yeah, if you turn and look at it the opposite way, then yeah, an, an active manager, an active investor is picking stocks, you know, timing the, you know, market in terms of when to invest and get into the market, right? So so that's part of an active decision. The index has a published rule, set of rules, and then rebalances on a schedule and it has to follow that schedule. So, so yeah, correct. Uh, I would say it might be easier to define what an active manager does in like your traditional stock picker or, um, you know, somebody who's like looking to beat the market. I think you've discussed in the past about advances in quantitative research and how that has made indexing more exact, more precise, and more able to uh, track the important factors in, of investing. Yeah, I think we've come a long way from you know the original factor research that defined you know how uh, factors behave, different factors, and and now we have. Um, Clients who want, you know, the specific exposure levels um, to a factor, they might want more to a certain, you know, factor like quality factor, for example, and like less on the, the, you know, uh, and more on the low volatility, for example. That's actually a pretty popular combination these days, quality and volatility. And and so, yeah, we have, to, uh, you know, that with the technology, you know, the research team that. Uh, looks at, um, you know, how to quantitatively capture these segments. And, you know, we, we have uh, like predefined sets of rules that can then be programmatically um, and systematically applied um, to create these indexes. Yeah, I think in our parlance, we refer to it more as probability or profitability and value and um, versus growth and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I, I know you have uh, indexes covering all that sort of thing. Yeah, and and they, they, there's distinction there too. You know, the the Russell style indexes, for example, were launched in 1987. Those track growth and value uh, indexes as two sides, like splitting the Russell 1000, for example, into growth and value sides of the market. Um, now we go into factors. It's it's more narrower cuts, right, of the index. In, more specific. So more specific, yes, exactly. So, so the the value factor index will hold fewer names than, say, the Russell Value Index. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.